well, thank you for joining me again on another podcast. This is Grace with All Borders. This is Bishop Orville Bedford Sr. saying thank you for joining me on another podcast. It is my hope that as you listen to this podcast, that your heart will be blessed, inspired, and encouraged. Don't forget that Grace with All Borders can be heard on any podcast platforms. So wherever your friends and your family listen to a podcast, you can share with them so that they can listen and be encouraged. If you're blessed, email me at orbministers at gmail.com. Check out my website, obeckford.net.org.com.us and be inspired. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel at ORB Ministries on YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and to my podcast. They're all free subscriptions. So listen and be blessed and be encouraged and let me hear from you. I want to take you into a service that I'm already ministering on the conditions of the heart. As I say, I don't normally share my sermons, but recently I feel inspired to share these sermons with you. So be blessed and pass it on to your friends and your family. Let's go into the service already in progress where I'm preaching on conditions of the heart. I must listen to. I want to share a thought and to bring you into a word as we look into the scriptures today. We're going to do a little reflection on the heart. The heart, the condition of the heart, the production of the heart, uh, what the heart contains and what comes out of the heart as a result of what the heart contains and just a reflection on why God only deals with the heart. God only deals with the heart. God only assess us via the heart. God only analyze us by what he sees in the heart and so God is not fully impressed by what others are impressed with God is not moved or attracted to what others are attracted to he goes deep on the inside and that's where he does his assessment and his Conclusion, I find it interesting that all through scriptures we will we'll see which we will never be able, we'll never be able to mention the, uh, the, the enormity of verses and passages and, and, and um, that refers to heart in one way or the other. But I particularly want to take a look at Luke's Gospel 645 that we will look at that verse with a spend most of our little time in that verse to do a little assessment, a breakdown, and an exploration or an exposition, if you might say, of what is contained in that verse. But before I get to that verse, in in looking at God's examination that goes beyond statue, I'm reminded of when he sent Samuel, to the house of Jesse is a familiar story I, I think with all of us that Jesse had many sons but in the house of Jesse God saw a special young man that he as a matter of fact would have anointed king A man who would eventually slay Goliath. A man who would be defined or described as a man after God's own heart. A man who ultimately would be an ancestry of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. And so... In the house of Jesse, and when you follow me, I am—I don't think I'm preaching this today. I want to 
I want to, I want to relay this to you. In the house of Jesse, God saw a man, a young man. But I want you to know, as the and, and we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. But read in 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 First Samuel sixteen. I think you'll find that text in First Samuel sixteen. As as De, as Samuel went down to the house of Jesse, and um, and when they saw Samuel coming in, they they wondered whether or no. He was coming with peace, but God said, go in peace and in order to put their heart at ease, take a sacrifice and, and offer it. And when you are asked if you come in peace, say, yes, I come in peace. But as he went there, he went there with a purpose and he went there to find a young man who was in the house of Jesse and when he heard, when Jesse heard the purpose, follow me closely here. When Jesse heard the purpose of Samuel coming into his house to find a young man to anoint that God desired to use. The first one Jesse sent for in his own calculation was Eliab. He sent for Eliab because more or less Eliab had the cut. If you look at um, some of these young men, you know, you talk about the guy with the muscles and the statues and the guy, you know, who pumped the weight and looked good. And the guy who has been to school, the guy who has degrees, the guy who has status. In Jesse's eyes, that's the man that he thought that God would have wanted from his house. The man that fit Dave, Jesse's statue in his own mind. The, the man that he think, if I am going to give one of my young sons to God, he must be this one. If God sent you down here, Samuel, for a man of my house, it must be this one. And God, when he presented Eliab, justified by Jesse and in the eyes of Samuel he immediately caught the attention of Samuel and Samuel was impressed Samuel was impressed by the statue of Eliab and he was ready hello somebody Samuel was ready to place the anointing on Eliab. But God said, hold it, Samuel. Pull back. I am not impressed with what you are impressed with. Because you're impressed with what you see in terms of a man's statue. It looks good and fill your eyes and you think the, 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 the ginormity of a statue, you think that he would be able to do what I want him to do. But God said, don't you anoint him because I am not impressed by him. And in other words, he says, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on his height or on the statue because I have refused him he does not have what i am looking for and he went on to say for the lord see it not as man seeth for man looketh on the outward appearance but god looks at the heart and if you are small, but you have a big heart, hallelujah, God can use you. If you don't have muscles, but you have a good heart, God can use you. If you don't have status or statue, and you have a good heart, God can use you. If you're not recognized by those around you, and you have a good heart. 
God can use you. I'm not going to spend much time because I don't want to kill, kill your time here too much, but that's a fascinating story. And the story tells us in the synopsis that, they, that, that one after the other, as David, as Samuel rejected one son after the other, Jesse couldn't understand. Who then do you come to my house for? Come on with me, somebody. And when he had brought all the recognized sons, Samuel said, God keep on saying, not that one, Samuel, move on, move on. Not that one, Samuel, move on. There is one that I see that JC doesn't recognize and that's not found among the group here. And Jesse and Samuel said, don't you have any other son? Because what I'm hearing from her is like, is like, the, is like the, um, the, the host on the newscast. There is a, a producer and the, and the host has a hairpiece. Come on with me, somebody. The host has a hairpiece. And the hairpiece is connected to the producer. And the producer speaks... And the, and, and the host hear the voice of the producer. But nobody else hears what the producer hears. And so he, as, as, as Jesse brought one more son, the producer, God is saying in Samuel here, that's not the one. Ask him, Samuel, if he doesn't have another son. And then he said, don't you have another son? And he said, well, yes. I do have one other little son, but he's just a little lad. He, he, you know, he not go to school. He's not qualified like these guys. He's not been processed. He, he's been in the field taking care of sheep. And then God said to Samuel, tell him to call him. Tell him to go get him, Samuel. Go get him. And as soon as he came there and he saw him, the unction God is saying through the ear of Samuel via the spirit, that's him, that's him, that's him, Samuel, anoint him, that's David. Hallelujah. The shepherd boy. This is the one. Man, look at an outward appearance. But I dig deep. In the heart. Can I talk to somebody here? What God was implying here is that the man, the heart of the man is the man. Are you with me somebody? Uh, what you see on the outside is not the man. But what's on the inside that shapes the man. The one that the inside that drives the man. That's the man. The man's heart. David's heart. He said, and, they, and the Bible said, God said, that's a man after my own heart. We could find more in that lesson on a different text. A different sermon to say, how come a man after God's own heart was so messed up? We could, we could go after that another day, but that's not where I'm going today. We throw around the word heart. And I often wonder whether we know what the heart is as mentioned in the texts of the scriptures. The Bible talks about the deceitfulness and the wickedness of the heart in Jeremiah 17 verse 9. So the question comes, what is the heart really? The heart is almost everything that is not the body. In a broad sense, the heart is used as one's feelings. It is used as one's will. It is even used as one's intellect. The capacity for knowledge. Brown, Driver, and Briggs describes the heart as the inner man. The mind, the will, the understanding, and even the emotions. Every function of the man which is external visible follow me or audible manifestation 
that which you and me can see to determine who a person really is comes from the heart because it is out of the abundance of a man's heart his mouth speaks out of the abundance I want you to underline that word abundance underscore that word abundance because we're gonna we're gonna explore that word a little bit out of the abundance of the man's heart his actions are manifested out of the abundance of a man's heart he makes decisions out of the abundance of a man's heart he curses or swears or he praises or worship out of the abundance of a man's heart he tells you lies or he tells you truth out of abundance of a man's heart, he speaks good to you or he speaks evil to you. Out of the abundance of the man's heart. How do I know that? Here is what the great physician Luke writes about what the creator of the heart writes or stated. With an understanding of the natural and an understanding of the spiritual. In Luke 6, 45. And as soon as I get a chance to break this down to you, I'm done. So follow me closely. In Luke 16, 45, Jesus was giving an illustration from the verses above coming down to 45 helping Luke and the other disciples and you and me today to get a grasp on what a man's heart is and how one can understand what's going on in a man's heart. It says, a good man out of the treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. Are you with me? And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. And watch this. For out of the abundance of the man's heart, his mouth speaks. A good man. Out of the treasure of his heart. What is that? And there are four words that we want to explore a little bit. Good, evil, treasure, and abundance. A good man out of the treasure of his heart. What is treasure? The word treasure is the word thesaurus. And it speaks of a deposit that is wealth. That which the man has plenty of. Follow me here. That which you have plenty of is what is considered in this word, in this text, in this text the man's treasure. So an evil man, in other words, the scripture is telling us an evil man that when you see evil come out of a man, he has a whole lot more of that in his heart. Are you with me here? <laughs> follow me closely. And once you get this, I'll be done soon. So follow me closely. Out of the treasure of a evil man's heart, out of the abundance of evil in a man's heart, he does evil that you can see. But the text is telling us the little evil that you see somebody do, you ain't seen nothing yet. He's got a whole treasure of evil stuck up in his heart. Follow me. You soon find out what I'm, what I'm going with this. 
A treasure is a deposit that is wealth. That which he has plenty of. That which he deposits in great quantity. That which has he has a super abundance of. That which he draws from in order to pass it on. No man can ever tell you all that is in his heart. You can never digest all that is in somebody's heart. As a matter of fact, he couldn't draw everything out of it to tell you what's in his heart. Follow me here. On the other hand, the same in reference, the same word treasure. A good man out of the wealth of what he stockpiles in his heart. <laughs> When he makes a withdrawal or when what is in his heart spills over. I want you to follow those statements because uh, abundance is going to tell you what I'm saying here in the text in terms of super abundance or spilling over. Whatever comes out of a good man's heart is good. And by the way, the same is true. When you find a good man, and when a good man has done something good to you or for you, you ain't know nothing yet. There is a whole lot more good. Hallelujah. Come on with me, somebody. Woo! There's a whole lot more good in a good man's heart that you cannot see. So the little that you are able to get from a good man, just consider he has a treasure of goodness stockpiled somewhere. Who is talking in this text? It is Jesus Christ himself. The undisputable creator of all things. The undisputable omniscient one who said to us that he knows the very secret things of our hearts. He knows the thoughts and the imagination. He knows the things that we haven't even thought of yet. He knows them. And then he's saying, a good man out of the treasure of his heart his very inner being his very intellect his very emotions his knowledge his, his ability to communicate his, his ability to, to digest things where he makes decisions come on somebody the heart of the man is where he makes decisions and no wonder we are told also by the wise man Solomon in, in Proverbs that, 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 that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You are everything that your heart is. And, and, and what we are externally is who we are internally. Hallelujah. The evil comes out of us is not by mistake. It's an overflow. Come on with me somebody. He will come out of us. It's not by chance or by happenstance. Nobody makes you do it. Nobody can make you do evil if you don't have evil in you. Can I talk to somebody here? Out of the abundance of one's heart, his mouth speaks. No matter how you say somebody trouble me, somebody make me angry. If you ain't got no evil in you, it can't come out. Jesus said it clearly. We'll come back to that before we wrap it up shortly. That's the example Jesus was giving in Luke's record when he talks about in the previous verses about a good tree. He was using the tree as an example for us to understand that a good man can't produce evil and an evil man can't produce good. Because out of the abundance 
of what comes out of a man's heart, we only hear a little summary of that from his mouth. He said, for every tree, you'll know the tree. That's what Jesus says, right? You'll know the tree by what it bears. You'll know the fountain by what comes out of it. This is not the pastor coming to conclusion. This is what Jesus, the only wise God, the one who understands the, the internal affairs of man, the one who understands the things that the man has not even yet determined himself. He says just like a tree can bring, and I'm not talking about when you're talking about, uh, you know, agriculture and people go in and try to ingraft tree and put a little, put a little, a little lima coffee in a, in a cocoa. It's not the tree. The tree is the whole structure. What the tree is designed, we're not talking about artificial things that, that, that cause us to produce some other things that look like what it's not. We're going to the core of nature. That's a good thought. The core of nature. And Jesus is saying that which is natural. Come on with me somebody. Say natural. That which is natural, that is not fabricated. That which is natural, which is not engrafted. That which is natural, designed by nature and fulfill its purpose according to God's divine institute. One tree can't bring forth two different fruit. Because you'll know the tree by the fruit it brings forth. Neither does Jesus say can, can, a, can a fountain bring forth sweet water. And bitter water at the same time. That's not ordinary. That's not according to nature. The evil man. On the other hand. And following the same process of the good man. With one caveat. What is stockpiles. And treasures. Is evil. So watch him or her when they spill over. It is guaranteed to be evil. An evil man. Digest that. Here is how I know that for sure. For Jesus said in the same verse of Luke. For out of the abundance of the man's heart his mouth speaks here is the key word for us to understand the key word in this text is the word abundance the word abundance in the greek is used as used in the text goes beyond having plenty the word speaks of a surplus. Say surplus. The word speaks of surplus. The word speaks of super abundance. The word speaks of, from the collegiate definition, is excessive. It also speaks of abundance that is left over and above i hope you're getting that because if you're not digesting that you're going to miss it because i'll be done soon is anybody here i know some people here are good cooks and some people have family gatherings has anybody ever cooked for hate for 20 people and hate people show up tell me what happened when you cook for eight people 20 people and eight people shows up you're going to have a super abundance of leftovers. Come on with me, somebody. And, and then you hear the sort of call. Does anybody want a second? And anybody want some to take home? That is what the scripture is saying. That's the word that Jesus used for abundance. A super abundance. Excessive and spillovers. So my point is, my, my point is, when you hear a little bit of evil out of somebody, Sam, you ain't know what's going on. They got a whole truckload of evil packed up somewhere. 
When you get a little bit of good out of somebody, they got a whole truckload of good pack up somewhere. Because the Bible said what the man treasures isn't in his heart until it spills over. Is what you and I see and hear. We only have access. Oh, somebody help me here. We only have access to the spillover. But God knows when things have been developing in the heart a long time before it spills over. And some and you hear some people say sometimes say, and me can't hold it no more. You hear some people say, me can't hold it no more. Me can't take it no longer. Come on with me, somebody. And then they overflow you. You begin to hear the spillover. Come on with me here, somebody. What you hear is has been built. Oh, somebody help me here. What you hear and what you see have been piling up a long time ago. Can I talk to somebody here? Out of the abundance of the heart, a man speaks. Spillover or leftover only happens spillover and leftovers only happen after people are full then they can't take it no more then what's left and by the way oftentimes when you get a leftover it's not really look because now you start to pack up everything in one dish start to put chicken and curry goat and roast beef and pork and rice and sweet potato and gravy in one little plastic container and when and eventually now they become in, inseparable it depends on how you drive and if you make two two step out for your brake and it move two times you get you get potato on top of rice but that's the spillover and that's what you take home is the spillover and the super abundance. Amen, somebody? And that's what Jesus said, the good man. And I, when, I, when I look at that text and I try to digest, I say, God, it, it, it requires me to begin to assess myself because what comes out of my mouth, there is a stockpile in my heart. Come on with me, somebody. What others hear of me, what others hear me utter, there's a stockpile of that in my heart somewhere. What others see me do, there's a stockpile of that already in my heart. Heart. What drives me to do what I do today? There's a stockpile of that in my heart. Out of the abundance of a man's heart, his mouth speaks. In other words, whatever you hear a man's mouth say, is only the spillover of what is in his heart. And by the way, in my thought, that is scary. Because some people you see only evil out of some people. And I'm not saying anybody here, here with me today are even belonging to this church. I'm, I'm just saying there are some people that, that everything you see of them is evil coming out of them. And if what you can see and hear is evil, I want you to begin to use your imagination, the value, the quantity, the enormity of the evil that you don't yet see. Because Jesus say, out of the abundance of the heart, the man speak, what you see and hear is leftovers or spillovers after the body it is already full come on somebody and the same is true if you are good if you're good God knows you are really good amen somebody because Jesus said what good are, what good we see of you what good we see of you there's a whole lot more where this comes from I hope we get a grasp on that what comes out of a man's mouth if you think what you see and hear is good or bad you haven't seen anything yet. If you were able to see the heart, you would be blown away. Hallelujah. You only see and hear from the abundance of the heart. And I want us to understand the text within the context. What Jesus is saying that Luke writes here. That when we leave here and when we say out of the abundance of one's heart he speaks, we can understand that we only hear just a little bit of the spillover of what's really in somebody's heart. So when you hear somebody is crying out, there's a whole lot more happening before they begin to cry out. 
When you hear somebody rejoicing, there's a whole lot there happening before the rejoicing comes out. When you hear somebody, when somebody's showing goodness and mercy, there's a whole lot that's happening before it gets to that point. The conditions of the heart. Jesus said to Samuel, don't be impressed by what you see in stature because he's filled with something else. He's filled with something else that I'm not approved of. I rejected him. I, I disapprove him. I don't want him. His heart don't meet my requirement. A good man's heart. Hallelujah. When the good man does wrong, come on with me somebody. When the, when the good man does wrong, his heart is broken. And that's not, oh somebody help me here. Somebody help me here. I gotta wrap this up quickly, but 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 it doesn't mean a good man can't make wrong moves. Are you getting what I'm saying here? But because the good man makes a wrong move, and because his heart is not already filled with evil, oh somebody praise him here. Woo! Because his heart is not filled with evil, he quickly recognizes. Somebody help me here. That he make a mistake. He quickly repents. Or oh, somebody praise him here. He quickly turns around. And says father forgive me. Hallelujah. Oh somebody praise him here. Somebody praise him here. Somebody praise him here. Hallelujah. No wonder. As messed up as David was. God knew he had a good heart. God knew he had a broken heart. God knew he had a penitent heart. Can I talk to somebody here? God knew he had a humble heart. And as much as he did drastic, wicked, evil things, but the stockpile of what was in his heart, oh, somebody help me here. The stockpile of what was in his heart was predominantly good. <laughs> And no wonder he went to God even after he had Uriah killed. And when, 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 when he was told by Nathan, you are the man. Hallelujah. And when that was within his heart, began to affect his conscience. And it brought him broken before God. And he went to his master, Lord, his shepherd, and said, Father, against you, and you have I done uh, only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight I beseech you God not to rebuke me in your hunger nor chastise me in your hot displeasure for I have acknowledged my sins my transgressions and my sins are ever before me oh somebody praise him here a good man's heart will come to repentance a good man's heart will seek forgiveness But an evil man's heart gets more evil and gets more rebellious and, re and resentful and take further action to make himself worse. David went to God in the same prayer and psalm in which I personally can, can conclude the Psalm 51, I mean, is the greatest prayer a human being has ever prayed before God outside of Jesus Christ himself. That we have not heard the text of his, of his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane and only second to Jesus in John 17 where he prayed from the world. But, but the Psalm 51 is the greatest prayer that, has, that a man has ever prayed recorded in the hold the scriptures and in that same text Jesus uh, David said God create in me a clean heart oh God and renew your right spirit within me cast me not away from your presence nor take your Holy Spirit from me restore unto me the joy of thy salvation hallelujah Woo, glory hallelujah hallelujah 
the condition of the earth brought him to brokenness and so one may question whether when God says he's a man of his own heart how could a man of God's own heart come to this condition of doing so much evil but it came back into the man's penitence and brokenness and restoration and the man declared that after you have restored me then will I teach transgressors thy laws and sinners shall be converted unto thee just about done you only see and hear from the abundance of a man's heart the leftover imagine how much it takes to fill the heart we're talking about condition of the heart if you want to know what is in a person's heart watch their action you want to know what's in a person's heart listen to their words listen to their conversation and consider the heart to be 10 times more of what you hear and see outside here out of the abundance of a man's heart the mouth speaks a bucket can't spill over until it is full are you hearing me the bucket can't spill over until it's full and when the heart spill over evil it's because the heart is full of evil hallelujah no wonder john tells us in john first john 3 21 beloved beloved if our hearts does not condemn us then we have confidence toward God when we check our hearts if our hearts free us we can go to God with confidence but there are times when we go to God and our hearts don't free us there are times we go to God when our hearts are not broken and our hearts are resisting and our hearts are evil come on somebody Sometimes we go to God and we, we're praying out of a evil heart. Because we want God to render evil to others. God will not respond to the evil requests of an evil heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My beloved, if your heart does not condemn you, then you have confidence toward God. And finally, when you hear someone say, what you hear is not who they are, that's a lie. When somebody tell you they might make a mistake, when somebody tell you that's, that's not really how I am, <laughs> that's a lie. How of the abundance of the man's heart his mouth speaks. He maybe just didn't want you to know that's all that's happening inside of him. So when he said, that's not really who I am. It's, 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 a, it's a defense mechanism. Not to make him or her look that bad. But take it from Jesus. Amen somebody. How many of us going to take it from Jesus? If we want good to come out of our heart, what we need to do? Stockpile. Come on somebody. Treasure up good things in our hearts when our hearts are filled with good things automatically good things will come out of our hearts and in what you pursue is where your heart desires scripture tells us that where a man's treasure is there will his heart be also where everybody stockpiles is what fascinates him come on with me here what he stockpiles is what propels him what he stockpiles is what he enjoys and if you enjoy doing good if you enjoy being good guess what you're gonna do you're gonna stockpile good amen somebody and if evil drives you and you're fascinated and and gratified by evil you're gonna stockpile that but don't forget Whatever comes out of the mouth is what resonates in the heart. For out of the abundance of the heart, 
the mouth speaks. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. So when the jumping and the shouting and the dancing and the music is over, when the exercise and the muscle, the body of the Bible says that bodily exercise profit little. Because God is not impressed with external stuff. And I conclude and I close on this last statement as Jesus said because he looks at the heart. He told even some who came up to pretend to be worshippers. He said you worship with your lips. But your heart is far from me. He said those who dress good and look good on the outside. say you look like a whitewashed sepulcher. But inside I see nothing but dead man's bones. Conditions of the heart. That's where God looks. And that's what he make, where he makes his conclusion. Well, well, well. Well, well, my friends. It's time for every one of us to examine our hearts and see what we are stockpiling. Because it's out of the abundance of our hearts that our mouths speak. Jesus made it clear. I hope that has been a source of inspiration for you cause you to do some reflection like it has caused me to do and if you are inspired and encouraged i encourage you to share with your friends and your family that they too can share this moment of reflection may god bless you again i'd love to hear from you email me at orbministries at gmail.com orbministries at gmail.com or contact me through my website obeckford.com.us.org.net either one i'd love to hear from you don't forget to subscribe to my podcast. It's free. Also my YouTube channel, Orbi Ministries. All free subscriptions. And make sure you're notified when I do another podcast. God bless you until then. This is Bishop Pavel Beckford Jesus saying, see you on the next Grace Without Borders. Peace.